Howdy, uh, Jordy from San Diego Makers Guild. Uh, today we're going to build an Atticore cardboard sumo Atticate, uh, basically an expensive cardboard uh, robot. Um, some things that are needed in the kit uh, that are not included in the kit are glue sticks, glue guns, uh, four AA batteries, whether they're alkaline or rechargeable, that's up to you, and a small Phillips and a small flat blade screwdriver. Okay, uh, next step is uh, when I get a new kit or a new project is I like to inventory what's in the kit, just make sure I have all the parts. Uh, first of all, we have two constant rotation servos, and each of the servos has a little bit of sticky tape that comes on it. In the little servo bags, there's an extra bag of screws and parts. Those are not needed, but if we lose a screw, there's always extras in these. Let's go ahead and get this out. Okay. And then we have the six cardboard pieces, the, the, the chassis base, two shells, uh, the front blade, and then the right and left uh, walls of the actual cardboard bot. Uh, two wheel packages. In the wheel packages there is a, uh, a small screw here that's used to screw the wheels onto the actual servos. And then we have our Atticor uh, Sumo Bot controller board, and then we have a battery holder with a switch on it. And that is pretty much the inventory. Okay, you'll notice on the actual base of the servo, uh, base of the cardboard robot, you have markings for the servos with the little lines toward the back, which is where the wires will go when we attach them. You'll also notice here that we have like a little squared area. That's actually where our um, our controller board is going to fit on there. And you'll notice on the controller board there's some buttons here. They go toward basically between the servos, kind of like that. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start connecting things. I'm going to go ahead and put the actual controller board on the servo base, on the, on the base of the robot here real quick. And just kind of line it up and stick it down. Next step is the uh, servos. I'll go ahead and take the covers off the sticky tape. Um, you'll notice the little tabs sticking out each side of the servo, and you'll see that that, that little tabs are sticking out on the actual, uh, you'll see them documented on the board here. We want to make sure those line up pretty close to what's on the board. And then stick them down. And we'll do the second servo kind of the same way. Again with the wires toward the back. And line those up. And now if you can see on here, the reason why we put the board in there that way is so that later on if we need to get to the adjustment pod on the servo to adjust the servos, you're able to get to them on both directions uh, that way. Okay, so next thing we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and hook up the servos. You'll notice on the board here, uh, on this side, the bottom two connectors are D1 and D2. Um, on the servo wire, you have an orange wire, a red wire, and a brown wire. Orange wire is going to be the signal wire, red wire is the power, and the brown is the ground. The orange wire in ours is actually going to be connected basically toward the, uh, the, the Wi-Fi chip. So you want to connect the servos on D1 and orange wire to the center on D2. Okay, that gets our connections for the servos there. Next step we're going to do is we're going to take the battery compartment and you'll notice there's a red and a black wire here. On the uh, screw terminals on the front of the board there's a, uh, a 5 volt and a ground. 5 volts going to be the red wire and ground's going to be the black wire. Uh, it's important to make sure, see the little bit of the wire that's sticking out the metal part. Uh, we want to make sure that when we put that in the terminal that the metal is connecting to the, the terminal. You don't want to push it in there so far that the terminal's screwing down on the outside of the shielding or the, the, the plastic of the wire. So we'll go ahead and get that in here. And it just takes a flat blade screwdriver. Go ahead and screw that down. And make sure it's metal to metal contact. Give it a little tug, make sure the wire is good in there. And then we'll do the ground wire, brown, uh, black wire. Same thing, we want to make sure we get it metal to metal. And tighten that down and then just kind of tug them and make sure the wires are tight. Okay, uh, next thing is just check the, the switch to make sure it's in the off position. And we're going to flip the battery compartment over and uh, on the batteries, the flat spot of the battery goes to the springs, just so you know you get them in there the right way. Get these plugged in and we'll get the battery compartment cover back on. 
Okay, we'll flip that back over and uh, we're going to go ahead and turn it on. When I do, you'll notice that you get the uh, red light on and the green light blinking and you can hear this one of the servos is just spinning and that's why we do the adjustment. Uh, you'll get some servos that twitch. Twitching kind of sounds like that. It's not a consistent. What you do is you just basically take the servo one direction and then the other and then kind of find the middle spot between the two when it's not moving. And a lot of these servos will come out of the box where you don't have to adjust them. Like this one's fine, but that one was all twitchy. Okay, so that's kind of why we have the board where it is and where the servos are so we can get to the adjustments. Okay, so the next step is I'm going to go ahead and just kind of turn the power off on that. And we're going to go ahead and get the left and the right side of the cardboard bot. And we're going to go ahead and start attaching our parts to the actual bot. Um, you'll notice on the actual pieces there's letters like B and D. There's a B and D on the, on the bottom part that it fits to so that you can see that they line up. Just kind of put that on there. And we're going to put a little glue in here just to kind of tack it. A little drop on top of the servo and then one up here. And just kind of make sure that's up and down. The other side we have the A and the C, kind of the same thing. We're just going to plug them in and then kind of tack the glue in here. A little bit on the top, a little bit on the front. And then we're going to kind of a, a fit and adjust the other things. We'll come back and we'll, we'll put a lot more glue on there to basically make it stronger uh, here in a moment. Um, the next step is to find the shelf piece. You'll see it says shelf on it. Um, on that and then basically that piece you can fit it in this way or that way it doesn't really matter uh, when you do that though we do want to take the battery compartment and feed it through the shelf so that its wires are going through the hole and we'll get to turn it around to match up the letters and we'll just kind of plug everything in here make sure your servo wires stay below that so that they're just that you'll tuck them in there later Okay, so then that's the shelf. I don't generally glue the shelf down, I just kind of leave it in there floating. And uh, that lets us get to the next step, which is getting the top on. Um, let's do this. I want to pop the shelf out just for a moment and leave the battery kind of like that. Come back in and we're going to kind of put a lot more glue in to reinforce the sides of the bot and that just makes things a lot stronger okay I'll let that cool down a little bit and again we'll just kind of flip the shelf back in place where it goes wiggle all the tabs in there we go Okay. Okay, so the last piece of this is going to be getting the, the top on there. Again, it has the letters. Uh, you'll notice that the top has an area where it's notched on the, on the top and it's flat on the bottom. The notches actually go to the front of the robot. Uh, again, you want to kind of feed the battery compartment through. Uh, and then the white part goes to the outside to kind of um, get you a clean, pretty bot. So, and again, you just run some glue. Here, here. Uh, how much glue you use is kind of up to you. Uh, if you're going to be uh, using a bot uh, in sumo competition or if you're going to build a, a bot with a weapon, you may want to put a lot more glue on there to just keep it strong and reinforce it. Okay, and we got the top on and now the front blade. You'll see it says front on it. It also has notches and letters. Same exact thing. You just want to kind of uh, put some glue on the tabs. Fit in the notch, you know, white front of the bot to the front, and then kind of tack it in there. Again, put a little bit more glue on the pieces that are going to be attaching. Pop that in there and let it dry. Okay, and now we've got a bot basically built uh, minus the wheels. Um, at this point, if you want, you can kind of take the wires and figure out how to wire management, tuck them in, and kind of get them out of the way for you. Uh, tuck them under the side or you just kind of stick them in the back. It's up to you. Alright, and then 
I'm going to go ahead and just go ahead and place the battery uh, compartment into the battery shelf opening. All right, so there's our bot minus the wheels. The next step is just basically take the wheels out of the bag. Make sure you don't lose the little screw. If you happen to miss one, there are extra ones in the little bags that uh, we took from the servos earlier. So we have a plastic wheel and a rubber tire. The wheel and tire, you just kind of roll the rubber tire on the outside of the wheel. Get it to pop on there. On the wheel itself, there's kind of a flat spot and then a bigger hole. The bigger hole's the part that goes onto the servo. And uh, we're going to go ahead and kind of attach that. Make sure you press it down nice and tight. And then you'll take your screwdriver, screw in the middle hole, take your Phillips screwdriver, and just make sure you get it screwed down there tight. And once it's on there, make sure you kind of roll the wheel and just make sure it's not wobbling real bad. All right, and then the next tire and wheel. Got a little bit of glue here. Let's get that out of the way. Okay, same thing. Um, bigger hole basically goes onto the servo. Wrap the tire around the wheel. Okay, and then this time, again, the bigger hole, we're going to place that on the servo and then squeeze it down. And take the screw and put it in the middle hole. If we can get the screw to go in there. There we go. Phillips to screw it down. Wow. There we go. Notice how I hold the wheel so it doesn't spin when I tighten down the screws. Uh, just a little trick to help. And it's on there and just kind of roll it and make sure it doesn't wobble too bad. All right. Um, now that we've got everything connected and we've adjusted the servos, clean it up a little bit, turn it on, you'll notice that the robot pretty much sits there without twitching or turning on its own. All right. Next step will be actually connecting a uh, smartphone to the actual robot so that you can control it and drive it around.